to Black Women's World Podcast. It is Sister Nista time. Well, hey, y'all. It's Tracy Mack. Listen, I want to share a story with you to all my fellow storytellers, story keepers, and anybody who likes to hear a story every now and then. I was thinking about this past weekend. I had the opportunity to be involved in three different events. And uh, all of the events either centered on gratitude or the topic of gratitude came up and I was given the opportunity to have some words. And so, but every time uh, the, 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 They only gave me one minute, three minutes, uh, or whatever. And uh, I was like, gratitude, that's my thing. That's my jam. You know, right up there with love and peace and wisdom. Gratitude is like one of my bedrocks, you know? And so I was like, how am I going to do this? That's just, I even told one group. Matter of fact, my uh, sorority, Nightdale Wake Forest alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. There is none greater. But anyway, I told them, I said, I don't have, that's just me clearing my throat. And I thought about the song with DJ Cool, remember? Let me clear my throat. Y'all remember that? Go check it out. It's a jam. But anyway, I was thinking after everything was over last night, I was just, you know, going over my weekend and everything and even what I'm about to do today. And I was thinking about gratitude. And I said, when did I get on this gratitude? When did it become such a thing for me? And I remember a long time ago, and I can tell that other story later, but I was not supposed to be able to have any children. And um, to save that story for another time, we have a 21-year-old daughter named Jada. (laughs) But uh, during that time, Jada was born with um, uh, cognitive delays, and she still has the challenges of dyslexia, but she's an honor student in college right now. Gratitude. But... um, She taught me, I called her my warm cake, she taught me about gratitude. Back when she was little, she didn't really talk coherently at all until she was just about three. And um, I was very careful, you know, with with having a pregnancy that wasn't supposed to be viable, sent home twice to have a miscarriage, and uh, bed rest the last three months. When she, by the time she was born, that was a fragile situation. And so when I you know, began to realize she wasn't developing as she should, it even became more fragile. You know, helicopter mom, she bear mom, yes, unapologetically. And so I didn't allow many people to babysit her because she couldn't communicate well and she had her little gestures that me and my husband could understand and some of my parents could understand. And so one night I had to go to choir rehearsal. I was directing our church choir back then. And my mom said, bring Jade over here. I'll keep her so you don't have to take her to choir rehearsal. And I said, all right. She said, I'll feed her. I already got food. And so Jada um, wasn't, she was just saying some things. And so when I went to go pick her up, I had taken uh, her little, uh, her little dish, you know, with her little, the little three compartments, you know, and, um, she would uh, have this habit when we'd be at home and she would say grace. And we were just so happy because she would just muddle out just enough to say grace. It's like, yeah, she started to talk. And um, all of that was fragile until, you know, she got to the age where she could remind me of what I was saying. And I was like, okay, this talking thing, you got it. We good. But she would just say her grace. And so my mom said, she said her grace. She said, and she kept saying she wanted more peas. And I gave her more peas, but she wouldn't eat them. And I looked at the table, and I don't know, a 70s kids, if we didn't eat our food, all of our food at dinner, at least in my house, it was sitting there waiting for you for breakfast. And so <laughs> I was like, you know, parents don't instill those same rules on children. They don't put them on their grandchildren. Grandchildren get away with everything. And so she hadn't thrown the peas away yet in the little dish, you know, the three compartments. And I saw these little peas and... And I said, mm. and I said, well, what did she say? She said she kept saying more peas. And I said, Mom, that's not how it works with Jada. I said, um, when she says her grace, she says, Lord, thank you. Best my chicken, best my macaroni. And then she would look at the peas or the vegetable and say, no blessing. <laughs> I said, did she say that? She said, yeah. She said, but she kept saying more peas. I said, no, mom. She said, more please. (laughs) She 
was loading my baby up with peas and my baby wasn't studying those peas. Peas get no blessing. And so, and it just reminded me of what that meant. Because when she started talking and, 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 and saying her grace, anything she said, thank you, more please, her daddy, my, my husband on, would, whatever it was. I don't care if he'd given her 45 cookies. If she said, thank you, more please, he'd load her up. And my point is, that's what gratitude, that's how she taught me. Because when you tell, because as, as, as a child, your parents are God to you. And it reminded me is when you tell God, thank you, thank you, more please, he will just load you up. He will keep loading you up just to see how grateful you are for what you have. Because you don't have to pay attention to the peas. She would say, no blessing. And I wasn't the type of mom to force. She was getting her vegetables and fruit, you know, another way. And she eats vegetables now. But every time she said, thank you, more please, her dad and her mom and her grandparents and anybody else would load her up. And so that's how I see gratitude. Grat gratitude is like telling God, when you say thank you, more please, he gives you that because you get more of what you pay attention to. Much love and peace. I'm grateful and I love y'all for real. Thank you, more please. Peace. This episode of Black Women's World Podcast is being brought to you in part by Tracy Mack Solutions for Life Institute Coaching and Training Services. If you're experiencing relationship challenges, be it personal or professional, leadership frustration, conflict fatigue, a need for change or a better sense of direction, or maybe transition uncertainty, Solutions for Life Institute is where self-discovery and peace of mind merge and thrive, creating strategic solutions. Self-discovery is the privilege of knowing who you are here to be and what you are here to do. By doing so, you get to enjoy maxing out your best life, navigate easier through challenging situations, and ultimately increasing your bottom line which is why we are sure that self-discovery is one of the best forms of self-care ever, on purpose, through mission, with passion and compassion. To find out more or schedule a consultation, go to solutionsforlifeinstitute.com. You've been listening to Black Women's World Podcast, the BWWP, brought to you in part by Tracy Mack Solutions for Life Institute Coaching and Training Services. No doubt you have enjoyed being in our world, and it doesn't have to stop here. Head on over to blackwomensworld.com. This is my personal invitation to you to stay connected with me on social media and more. I'd love to see you there, and I'm so grateful you came to be with me here. Invite someone else to join you in our kingdom next time so they can feel the vibe of our tribe of Sister Nistas and Sister Nista lovers too. Remember to be kind, be authentic, be generous, be excellent, be grateful, and while you're at it, go ahead and be extraordinary because that's just what Sister Nistas do on purpose through mission with passion and compassion. It's a black woman's world, baby, and you, my Sister Nista, are proof. I'm your self-discovery companion, your professional peacemaker, and your host, Tracy Mack. Wherever you are in the world, May you love and be loved by somebody. Peace.